Hello there, thanks for joining us on Frontline. I am Obiora Ilo. Glad to know you are out there with us. Today on our program, we'll be hosting a former Minister of Aviation, a former Minister of Culture, and a former spokesman of former President Olusegun Obasanjo. We'll also be looking at 14 years after democracy, how is this democracy affecting the lives of the ordinary Nigerian? I'll be joined by um, two very important Nigerians who will look at that issue and make suggestions. But right with me in the studio is Chief Femi Fani Kayode, former Minister of Culture and Tourism and Aviation, who was also spokesman to President Olusegun Obasanjo. Um, Femi, you're welcome to the program. Good afternoon. You said at the Akiti on the 28th of May, 9, 2013, where you parted ways with the PDP, mm -hmm. and I quote, if PDP does not get its act together soon, it is going to create a major problem for Nigeria as a nation. And as far as I'm concerned, PDP is a sinking ship. Mm -hmm. Why did you say that? Well, I think it's, it's self-evident. Um, if you look at what's been happening in the last four years, compare it to the previous four years, between 99 and 2007. You look at the record of the government that we have today. You look at their so-called achievements or lack of achievements. You look at the structures within the party in terms of internal democracy. You look at the acrimony. You look at the uh, way in which the government uh, that we have today at the federal level is conducting itself. Uh, and you look at the way in which the founding fathers of the party and those that built it up to the formidable machine that it once was uh, have more or less uh, been treated uh, in a very uncomplimentary manner, um, relegated, treated with contempt, and, uh, and, and, and so on and so forth. I'm talking about some of the key leaders um, who were there before, who are no longer there, and, and who are no longer being taken very seriously. Um, and I think you need the input of uh, people like Obasanjo, President Obasanjo and so many others to keep the party online. As far as I'm concerned, and this is, these are my sentiments, they're not necessarily his, um, I feel that people like himself and so many others um, have not been able to steer the party the way it should be steered because those that are in control don't want it to be steered in the right, in the right way. And each time um, anybody criticizes them or tries to set it right or make an input, you know, one is subjected to all sorts of uh, rancor and insults and so on and so forth, even persecution. And I feel that it's time uh, for some of us to take the bold step and say, listen, if you want to criticize and you want to fight the government or the PDP, you cannot do it from within. For the last four years, I've been fighting from within. Probably I've been more critical than any other person of this government, um, you know, for the last two years, certainly. And even before then, since Yara Dua came in, if you look at my articles, my write-ups, I've been very consistent all along, despite the fact that I was in the PDP, saying that, look, we need good governance. We need to do better. Um, I feel that it's now time for me to move, you know, uh, a little, uh, you know, to, to take the next step, the next logical step. And find your soulmates. And, and, re and, really, and really do, you know, begin to take them on. And of course, yes, find, find some of my soulmates uh, who left long ago um, and who are very happy where they are. People like Nuhu Ribadu and so many others, Al Rufai and so many others. Okay. Um Just a few days ago, on the 29th of yeah. May, the president presented a midterm report yeah. where for the PDP mm. and the present government, it was all thumbs up. Mm. They had done so well. And when you talk about um, criticizing government, mm. are you criticizing government, not realizing how much they've done about free elections and the boost in infrastructure as they claimed on the 29th? Are you, are you not aware of the strides they've made in areas like agriculture, in power? <laughs> Look, listen, it's all very well for a government to set its own exam and declare that they've passed with distinction. It's a very easy thing to do. I mean, you know, the night before Rome started burning, Nero was celebrating in his palace. Uh, before playing the fiddle and as it was burning he was playing the fiddle still congratulating himself saying that all was well and uh, and, 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 and Rome uh, and the Empire was flourishing meanwhile it was burning down this sort of thing happens all the time the same thing before the Russian Revolution the night before uh, the Tsar and so on and so forth his whole court was celebrating that all is well in the Russian Empire until of course 
uh, a series of, event, of events took place, and they were all swept aside. You know, so it's nothing new when a government scores itself as having 110% out of 100 uh, midway or midterm through its tenure. But we know what the facts are, and the facts are very depressing. And, 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 they, and, and let me just run through some of them. Yeah. Uh, we know, are, because it would be nice for you to give us actual Let me run through some of them. Mm -hmm. you know, this government, when we, when we left power, let me, it, it has to be relative. Okay? So let me make it relative. Mm -hmm. When we left power in 2007, uh, this country had, well, well Obasanjo came to power in uh, 1999. Um, we had $1.1 billion, U.S. dollars, in our foreign reserves. Okay? Now, by the time he left power, Okay? He had built it up from 1.1 billion to 67 billion U.S. dollars. He now took 20 billion out of that to pay towards the debt and left 47 billion U.S. dollars when we left power. Okay. Four years later, four years later, that is now, five years later, you know, the figure that we have in our foreign reserves is 45 billion U.S. dollars. In the last four years, despite, despite crude oil sales, despite all the money that has accrued to the federal government and so on and so forth, we have less today in our foreign reserves than we had in 2007 when we left power. That is number one. Number two, you look at the issue of, um, of, um, of, the, of the net, of the debt, of the international debt. Okay? I'm not talking about local, I'm talking about international debt. Okay? When Obama came to power in 1999, the foreign debt was 30 billion US dollars. By the time he left, it was zero. He paid it off. And we were the first you know, African country, at least in sub-Saharan Africa, to be completely debt-free. It's a record. And of course, it, you know, it attracted a lot, of, a lot of goodwill from the international community that nobody felt that any African country could do this. We achieved that, okay? 2007, zero, zero, we weren't owing anything. Five years later, we're now back in foreign debt again to the tune of approximately 9 billion US dollars. And we're still borrowing every day, okay? Let's look at the excess crude account. When Obasanjo came into power in 1999, there was no excess crude account. He created it to save money for a rainy day. Four, um, eight years later, he had 24 billion US dollars in the excess crude account, which is what he, he accrued and he kept it there. Okay? Nobody touched the money. Okay? The next administration came in. Five years later, well, about, well Yadwa came in and virtually spent it all, left 1 billion US dollars uh, by the time he passed on from 24. This government now came in a couple of years later. And what do we have there today? We have approximately 7 billion US dollars left in the excess crude account as we speak today, which means that we have 17 billion US dollars less in the excess crude account than we did in 2007. Okay? Today, you look at the indices in terms of unemployment. Graduates unemployment in our country is 80%. Eight out of 10 graduates, and there are many watching this program today, they don't have jobs. Eight out of 10. That is, out of every 1,000 graduates in this country today, 800 do not have jobs. That is an atrocious record. You look at, you look at the level of um, uh, uh, you look at, uh, inflation, you look at all the indices in terms, of, um, in terms of the economy, virtually every single one. Where can any of these people say that they have done well? Unless, of course, they're wallowing in self-delusion, which is something that's quite habitual. Well, no, but the economy has been growing. The GDP, GDP is growing. The GDP is growing. And don't, don't forget that you may have left the PDP just a few days ago. Yeah. But all these years, we were in the PDP. Yes. The P, well, first of all, let's get to the issue of the PDP, the, the, the GDP is growing. First of all, where are you getting the figures from? That's number one. How does that translate into anything on the ground? No, no, no. But there are a lot, of, a lot, of, a lot of international uh, organizations. Listen, listen to me very carefully. Yes. Okay? First of all, foreign investment in this country is down. Local investment in this country is down. We are owing almost 50 billion U.S. dollars in terms of local debts in this country. Industries are folding up. Jobs are not available for people, quite apart from graduate unemployment. Ordinary unemployment is about 70%. According to the UNDP, 70% of Nigerians are hungry when they go to bed. These are not good indices. Now, no, but, but now I, I'm prepared to concede that there may be one or two areas that they can clap for themselves and congratulate themselves. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. But I'm saying three years into a tenure, and it's three, it's mm -hmm. not two. Mm -hmm. He's been in power for three years. Yes. I'm not very, very impressed with, 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 with their record. I'm talking about the economy. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about security. I'm talking about the party itself, democracy itself how it has managed to unfold in this country. Yeah. I don't think we can be too yeah. impressed. But, 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 but Obasanjo did not pay local debts. He yeah. cleared the foreign debts. Yes, it did. So you can't claim that this government yeah. had amassed a local debt of about 50... No, no, uh, I didn't say Obasanjo paid the local debt. So, I said no, no. he paid the foreign debt. I know. So, we had local debt at the yes. time. But the local debts, if you look at, if you compare it to what we have now, mm -hmm. we were at least servicing it. 
the fact of the matter is that the economic team at that time, and you know, I, I really, it, it, this is not so much about Obasanjo's administration. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's past, it's gone, it's gone forever. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the situation we have in our country today. No, but and, you can't do that in isolation. Sure, and that's precisely what I'm talking about when you were in government. That's well, the record, our record in government is second to none. Let's go to aviation where you were minister. Yes. Are you saying that the aviation industry when you were minister yes. is better than the aviation industry today? What do you think? I mean, look looking at on, our airports, the on, physical what, turnaround. What, what do you think? What are the physical turnarounds at the airports? You look at the airports today, cosmetic stuff. You go there, you see all the, all the, you know, uh, the contracts that are being awarded uh, in order to beautify the place. That's all well and good. But you look at the issue of how many planes do we have? How many airlines do we have today? They've reduced dramatically. How many planes do we have flying in the skies today? Far less than before. How many uh, routes do we have, international routes? Far less than before. How much efficiency do we have? Far less than before. When I was in, when I was in uh, at aviation, there was not one plane crash. I thank God for that. It's the work of God. We've had a series of plane crashes since that time in the last, in the last, in the last four or five years. Uh, for me, as far as I'm concerned, and, 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 and you know, if, if we're going to look at it sector by sector, that's mm -hmm. a different ball game entirely. What I'm trying to tell you is this. We're talking about the PDP. Okay. And we're talking about the PDP federal government. Yes. Okay? And I'm saying to you that in terms of uh, 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 what a political party ought to be. As far as I'm concerned, the PDP has not done as well as it should do. And for me personally, I feel that it's wrong for me to continue to stay within the ranks of the PDP and continue to criticize them. We've tried to reform it from within. We set up in, in this very you know, uh, premises here. We used to have meetings of the PDP Reform Committee, chaired by uh, Chief Raymond Doc Pessy, with people like Professor Nwosu, the former minister, uh, Chief Sekibo, the former minister, Nasser El Rufai, the former minister, Akin Oshutu, so many of us. We tried our very best to do that. We did the honorable thing, but it didn't work, so it's time for us to move on. And as far as I'm concerned, to join forces with the progressives, I believe that Nigeria needs change, and I believe that the, the, the APC can bring that change that is so okay. desperately needed. On, also, at the press conference you had on the 28th yeah. of May, you said that Obasanjo's PDP is different from the PDP of today. Mm. Let me quote you. You said, Obasanjo built the PDP where everybody had a right to express their, their view, mm. and we settle issues from within. Yeah. That was what you said at uh, Kiti. And when I put a promo about our interview this afternoon mm. on my Facebook page, someone said, you were crying now because you're on the other side. Which other that people? When you were spokesman for yes. Basanjo, a lot of people complained about being left out, mm. and you were the spokesman for Basanjo, mm -hmm. who kept hitting them. Look, listen, let me... And maybe because you're on the wrong side today, me, let me, you're now criticizing me. government. Look, look, first of all, let's be clear about, if you want to talk about me, let's talk about mm -hmm. me, all right? I have been in politics for 22 years, mm -hmm. okay? I fought military governments. I stood when it came to June 12th. I, f I was in Nadeko. I went into exile for some time. I came back. I fought the military government. We worked for this democracy. There are many people that are within, that are in this democracy today that, that, that fought for it. They didn't just come on board later. When it was very unpopular to say no to military governments and so on and so forth, I fought for it. So my record is very simple and clear. I came into the PDP, I came into the uh, Obas Monjo administration based on the fact that I felt that he could do a reasonably good job. I was very critical of him before that time. And he proved me right. And I think the record of Obas Monjo speaks for itself. Okay? Now, in terms of being left out, left out of what? We oppose the ascension or the selection of Umar Yaradwa in 2007. We had no business being part of that government. I never wanted to be part of it. We opposed uh, Yar Yaradwa's... Yaradwa's uh, a selection by President Obas Onjo at the time. A number of us did, and we were very vocal about it right from the beginning. Throughout that period, we were vocal, and we fought them from within. Some of us left, some of us stood and fought them from within. Uh, good luck, Jonathan, came in. Initially, a lot of goodwill. We thought he would do a pretty good job. Again, we discovered the fact that he was not performing at the level uh, that we expected him to do. And you don't expect me to, to sit there and, and say, well, let me just keep quiet and be nice and, and, and try and gather a few crumbs. If you want to get something from government, if you, don't want, if, you want to, to, if, you, if you want them to remember you, if you don't want to be left out, what you do in the characteristic Nigerian way is to go to them and say, listen, I'll be a good boy. I won't say anything wrong. I'll say you're doing a wonderful job like so many people are doing today. You know, do whatever you can to me. Some of us are not into that. No, but, We're not but, interested no, in that. But, so uh, when you talk about being left out, if yeah. I wanted to be part of this, I would have been part of it. It's a question of taking a principled step that listen the performance in terms of what is happening in the country today mm -hmm. if it's not what you expect 
and you keep on fighting for it, you keep on speaking, and they're not listening, then you have to move away and try to change the government and bring change to Nigeria. We have had over 5,000 people, well over, slaughtered in the last two years in this country mm -hmm. by Boko Haram. I remember when I was saying what they've just done in the, in the Northeast now, state of emergency. I remember when I was screaming that two years ago, so about two years, something has to be done about this. Everybody said I was an alarmist. I shouldn't, uh, I, 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 I shouldn't be saying these things. And what did our president do? And this is where I started departing with. He initially, de he initially declared Boko Haram as, he, he, as, as his siblings and so on and so forth, whom he could not move against. The next thing he did, he set up an amnesty committee to go and discuss with people that are committed to destroying Nigeria and and establishing an Islamic fundamentalist state. It is only when it became so necessary and so, so obvious that these people had already taken over parts of Nigeria that he now saw fit to declare a state of emergency rightly in some parts of our country. And that's a good thing to do. But I don't think that do we you should... commend him for that? But I, I, listen, read my right. I commended him at the time. I always commend where I feel they get it right. Okay, let me always. just... Let me, it's very, uh, very let me, let me just let, let me just come in here. Though um, it was too late. Today, you're criticizing uh, the president and the, the PDP, government, the yeah. government and the PDP for running what, what I, could, I could summarize as an exclusive government. I, that, those are not my words. Okay. What I'm criticizing for, I'll be specific and yeah. clear. I'm criticizing them for not, for not doing as well as I believe they should be able to do. Okay, but one That's of the all. reasons you're leaving the PDP is yeah. that at that press conference, you mm -hmm. said something about intimidation, um, coming against people that criticize yeah, them, sure. and all that. And I take you back to uh, yeah. when you were in government yes. with uh, Olusha Gwabasanjo. Yes. I remember people like um, Governor Joseph Okalo of yes. Abia State. I yes. remember people like uh, Governor Dye Priyala yes. of uh, Bayelsa State. Yes. The, the, the government of Obasanjo came after them because they, 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 well, they opposed what Obasanjo believed in. Fine. Now, now, and now, you defended Obasanjo fine, at that fine, time. Fine, fine, fine. If we look at it, let's look at it. First yes. of all, when it comes to the issues of Oji Kalu, and he's a good friend of mine, as you know, and Alamissi and so on and so forth, I'm not aware of the fact that I ever commented on such matters. I commented on government policy in terms of the economy and the performance of the government. And I had my facts and figures, and that's why I was so effective. However, I will, ag I will agree with you that during the Obasanjo regime, there were a number of things that were done at the time which were not done correctly. I mean, I'll be the first to concede that. He's not infallible. That government were not, was not a government made up of angels. Many, many mistakes were made. I think third term was a mistake. I think the fact that Umar Yarda was selected to take over was a mistake, and so on and so forth. I think the handling of Anambra was a mistake. There's no question about that. But I'm not here to play, you know, uh, let, let's compare medals and let's do, you know, uh, 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 what do you call it, you know, jingle it and say who's better or who's... I'm concerned about Nigeria moving today. Forward. I'm concerned about moving forward. Now, okay. whatever mistakes Obasanjo may have made, five years later, the present administration should not be making such mistakes. And I'll also tell you something else. As much as um, Obasanjo appeared... Uh, to be reasonably hard on his enemies. I was in that administration. The number of internal fights that we had within government, even at cabinet level, you can ask people. Some of us disagreed on a number of occasions with government policy and with President Obasanjo on a number of issues. And he always allowed us to voice our opinion. We were never told that, listen, you'll be thrown out of the party uh, or you'll be thrown out of the government if you voice an opinion that's against the leadership. We were never told that. Um, as long as they felt there was goodwill and you were saying it for the right reasons, there was, you had every right and every reason and every opportunity to voice your, opinion, your, your, your opposition to any government policy. Okay, okay. Today, what do we have in PDP? We have a chairman of the... And, and I have tremendous respect for Chief Tony Anini. I'm not here to insult or oppose anybody. I'm only, I'm only commenting on policy. We have a situation where... The chairman of the PD Board of Trustees has now said that the likelihood is that there may not be uh, pre presidential primaries, um, uh, and, gubernatorial primaries. and gubernatorial primaries, you know, for the next... What type of thing? That, only, that has only happened, you know, in two places in the world. It happened in, in communist... Well, three. Communist China, <laughs> communist China, communist um, Stalinist Russia, and, and, and of course, it also happened under Hitler, the Nazis. That's how the Nazi party op operates. How can you talk about internal democracy where you're not going to have even primaries for people to, to, to try to oppose the president, the governor, or whoever it is? This is wrong, and this is one of the reasons. You also had a party chairman who is like a pa father to me, uh, Alaji Bamanga Tuku. He was a great friend of my father's. I grew up you know, knowing him as, as, as a dear uncle of mine. I have nothing but respect for him. But I disagree with some of his positions. This party chairman, a few months ago, um, got up and told the whole country that Boko Haram were freedom fighters. Now, in any other country in the world, 
which was facing an Islamist insurgency where people are being slaughtered. And the chairman of the ruling party will get up and say that, that those insurgents are freedom fighters. This would be a reason to ask the gentleman to resign. But of course, in Nigeria, that doesn't happen. People forget so quickly and people just move on and have hallelujah parties midterm and say everything is wonderful. Things are not wonderful. Things are not going well for our country. And we should urge and encourage our government to do better. Okay, let me, let me, you said uh, at, your, at your press conference, you said that um, the PDP in 2015, yes. if an APC candidate mm. wins yes. and they jiggle and wiggle and say that... So you really made, <laughs> well, you, you really done your homework. You remember all those words? Even I don't remember and them. Say, and say that <coughs> someone that lost has won, like they did at the... Uh, Nigerian Governors Forum, that they will know that the rest of you are men in Nigeria. Yes. And if you remember, after yes. the elections in yes. 2011, yes. part of the insurgency that we have today, some yes. people insinuated, excuse yes. me, insinuated that it was what Buhari had said about not letting anybody get away with rigging the elections and all that, that they may have also um, got people angry. Let Do you think that statements like this are good right. for the growth of our democracy. All right, let me, I think they're very good because it serves as a warning. And I'll also put a question to you. Do you think, uh, are these people planning to rig? I mean, it, it, has Nigeria got to a point that we can't even say that if you rig, there will be consequences? In other words, if you're planning to rig, we shouldn't even say so and tell you that it's wrong and that we will stand up to it. Is that where we've got to? Do you have facts that they're if planning to rig? I ha I'm putting the question to you. I never said they were planning to rig. What concerns me is the sentiment that you're not even allowed to come out and speak freely and say, listen, you mustn't rig. There mustn't be rigging. What we saw at the Nigerian Governors Forum election the other day was unprecedented in the annals of Nigerian history. I'm a historian. I follow the history of this country and many other countries, and I've been doing so for years. Okay? It is unprecedented. You had 35 men that went into a room distinguished individuals, all of them, respectable people. And they did a vote. It was a secret ballot. Everything was straightforward. And it was filmed. One got 19, the other got 15. They now left the room. And the one that got 15 now got up and said, I won the election. And the other gentleman did not win. The Rotimi Amici did not win. That he won the election. Now, when you see things like that, that certainly doesn't encourage me or others to want to stay within this fold of people who will, who will, who will say by their own uh, knowledge and vocabulary that 15 is actually higher than 19 in the numerical lexicon uh, you know, of humanity. It's well, extraordinary. Well, it's extraordinary. Well, Femi, I hope, I wish we had a lot of time. And I, <laughs> and I will take the liberty sure. to invite you to this program I'll again. I'll be delighted. But let me, let me ask you finally. Yeah. Why would you think... Mm that Nigerians will leave the government of Jonathan mm. and the PDP and vote mm. in 2015 for a party led by Buhari, um, um, Asiwaju, and the others. What, I mean, why would you say that? Listen what, to me. What, what are your facts? Li well, I don't, you know, I never said Nigerians were, I don't know what the mind of Nigerians are. All I know is that the level of discontentment for the present government and for the PDP in this country is unprecedented. Not only do I know that, I also know that in terms of quality of leadership, as far as I'm concerned, if you compare the leadership of today's PDP to the APC leadership, I mean, there is absolutely no comparison. It's time for change in this country. You have a situation where the present administration has marginalized the Southwest, that is the PDP Southwest, completely. They're complaining bitterly every day. They may not say so publicly. But they're fighting they're, among themselves. They're, they're, listen, they're that, the ones fighting you, you, among you, themselves. You, you, there are reasons for fighting you put to them. I'm not part of them, all right? <laughs> the issue is that they are being marginalized and they've been humiliated and disgraced by their own federal government and by their own party leadership. That is number one. Number two, you look at what is happening in the northern part of this country you'll see that people are not happy if you put north and west together and you now you now you now you now juxtapose that and put ijo land together to say that the ijo land will be able to to, to 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 defeat to defeat the whole of the north and the whole of the southwest okay in an election well these are strange calculations as far as i'm concerned i think the apc leadership it's a good quality leadership it is not just general buhari it is not just asiwaju tunumbu it is not just samunda Isaiah or nuhu ribadu or el you just joined, or so many you just, jo you just uh, joined listen, them listen so how me. did you know listen this? to me i've been part of those, the other ones I mentioned for many years, El Rufai, we are, we're, we're together. Ribadu, we're together. So many others. And most of them, 
that are in the ACN, we were in Nadeku together, okay? So this is, you know, don't worry too much about me. Let's worry about Nigeria. And as far as I'm concerned, they present a far more credible um, leadership than we have in the PDP today. And we're praying and hoping that we agree on a candidate and we go to the field and we'll defeat the PDP once over and put them where they deserve to be. Honorable Minister, I'd like to thank you. <laughs> my <laughs> pleasure. My, isn't my pleasure, pleasure speaking with mine. you, and I hope you'll be here again. I'll definitely be here anytime. And thank when we so return, much. we'll look at 14 years of democracy and how it's impacting on the ordinary Nigerian. Don't go away.